what is up with the lens choices in Obi-Wan Kenobi? How's it going guys? My name is Kyle and uh, like everyone else, I've been watching Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney+. Plus. I noticed a few interesting choices that they made with the lenses and some lens artifacts in some of the shots. So I decided to dig a little deeper and I wanted to share some of my findings with you. So right off the bat, what do I mean by lens artifacts? Well, if you don't know, when people talk about the character of a lens, they're talking about the different ways that light enters that lens. You get different artifacts like chromatic aberration or interesting lens flares or the sharpness of the image or the shape of the bokeh in the background. Those are those swirly out of focus lights that you see in the background of the image. And your lens choice is gonna have a huge impact on how the image looks in regards to those and, and other characteristics like that. Um, so modern lenses, they often try to make them as clean, as sharp, as perfect as possible. Um, but for a lot of people, they lose character that way. If you look at vintage lenses or some newer lenses, or a lot of times cheaper lenses, they have what people call character. They might not have perfect focus all the way across the frame. They may vignette a little bit on the edges, uh, stuff like that. And some people like that because it, they feel like it gives more character to the shot and it alludes more to that sort of classic style of cinema. So it's interesting to me that in the prequels series of Star Wars, um, they use pretty sharp lenses. Uh, episode two, I think, was the first full feature film shot on digital, and they sort of followed along with that uh, digital look, right? Everything was green screen, everything was digital, the lenses they used were super sharp, um, and it was just a very sort of uh, clean image overall. Um, with Obi-Wan Kenobi, the series, it looks like they've gone for a much dirtier, grungier, characterized sort of look. So let's have a look at what I mean, some of the shots here. So right off the bat, this is a shot early on. And by the way, I'm, I'm gonna try and not spoil anything. Um, there's not much for me to spoil. So uh, yeah, anyway, right off the bat here, um, we've got a shot here that's interesting. So you'll see at the bottom of the frame here, you can see a little bit of a light leak. So that's something where the ceiling on the lens might not be perfect and a little bit of light gets in where it's not supposed to and it creates this little flare on the bottom of the, lens, of the shot there. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then we cut to a wide shot and look at that vignette on the edges of the image. So that's pretty fascinating and you can see here on the waveform it's a pretty significant vignette. Um, so I thought that was really interesting because, again, a, a vignette's not usually something desirable in a lens. And it's not consistent either, right? It's in a lot of the wide shots, um, but you can see that some of the lenses they use don't really vignette at all. Um, so I thought that was fascinating. Later on, we see a forest, and every time we're in this forest, they have this really interesting characteristic uh, look on the lens where the top, like, quarter of the shot is blurred. So you can see here, this tree is in focus over here in center frame. But as we move towards the top of the frame, it goes completely out of focus. Now this could be done in post or maybe even by like smearing something on the lens. But this looks to me like something that happened in the lens itself. So I thought that was super interesting. We can see on uh, another shot later on when we go back to the forest. Um, where is it here? Girl's running into the forest. And there it is again, that really characterized look. We've got a vignette here on the bottom again. So I, I wanted to look further into this and I immediately went online and tried to Google what information is available about the lenses. There's not a whole lot, but on IMDB I found this that says that it was shot on uh, Ari Alexa LF, that's large format, and Tribe 7 Blackwing 7 lenses. I've never heard of that before, so I looked them up. They're a really fascinating company here uh, that creates lenses, and their whole philosophy is about 
detuning the lenses to give cinematographers more creativity in production. Um, and they, they're a pretty cool company. They compare the optics of the lens to EQ in audio. So they say just the same way that with audio you can you know, amplify or, or reduce certain elements of the audio. Just same thing with the lens. You can choose the characters of the sound that you like and amplify those and, and kind of, kind of create uh, a visual scape like you would create a soundscape in audio. So I'd encourage you to check out their website. They've got a pretty cool philosophy and a really nice design. Um, but these are the black wing lenses here that they mention. Um, so they're not anamorphic lenses. They're large format cine lenses. And um, they have a wide range of seven different focal lengths. Um, but basically like they are used by design or like each, each project they'll make the lenses unique to that cinematographer's needs and wants. Um, so I don't know exactly what the Obi-Wan Kenobi cinematographer wanted for those shots, but there's very clearly an intention to the specific characteristics of the lenses that they used and the detuning work that was done on those lenses. So I thought that was really interesting and I thought that was the end of it. But then I looked more and I saw that a lot of the shots in Obi-Wan Kenobi look like they're shot on anamorphic lenses. Well, the Blackwing lenses are not anamorphic. So I guess they combined anamorphic and non-anamorphic lenses within the shots, which is pretty interesting because that means that they added black bars to the non-anamorphic shots and, and maybe did some other modifications to make it look more anamorphic. But that, that really intrigued me. Uh, so I started looking more into that. All I could really find about behind the scenes was like this really crappy quality YouTube video online um, about some behind the scenes stuff. And you can see on the camera, the lens. Well, that doesn't look like one of the black wing lenses. So I started trying to figure out what lens that could be. The only ones I can think of or that I could come up with are these um, Apollo lenses. They are large format and anamorphic. So that would explain the, the, maybe they use these to the anamorphic shots and then the uh, black wings for the non-anamorphic stuff. Um, people, people often say anamorphic and spherical, but that's, that's not the only two types of lenses. But uh, anyways, um, so for the purpose of this video, I'm just saying anamorphic and non-anamorphic. So I thought that was really interesting and that got me thinking like, why would they use some lenses for some shots and you know, a totally different set of lenses for other shots because often cinematographers will choose a set of lenses because that way you get consistent color across all your shots and you know, consistent lens artifacts and flaring and stuff like that so that there's a cohesiveness to your frames. So have a look at this shot here. We see Obi-Wan working and we see this weird rainbow flare here. Now, from what I've seen online, that looks very similar to the kinds of flares that you'll get from those black wing lenses. So I think this sequence here was shot on the black wing lenses, but I'm not positive about that. The bokeh in the background also looks pretty round, so I, I, I don't think this was anamorphic, but I, again, I could be wrong. So that's, that's there, and I was like, okay, that's fine. But a little later in the episode, we see almost exactly the same shot but this time it's shot in anamorphic. So this flare, the blue flare is, is a very signature part of the anamorphic look. And you can see some of, the, some of the shapes in the flare look like they are anamorphic as well. So they basically shot exactly the same sequence twice. And in one of them they used, I assume the black wing lenses and in the other one they used anamorphic lenses and I was like why did they do that and I think that I think that the cinematographer is making a conscious decision there to use different lenses to portray different moments in the character arc which is super interesting uh, that's not confirmed but uh, just my speculation 
Um, something interesting to think about with lenses is in shots that are completely VFX, you still have to figure out what kind of lens you're shooting on. Um, so the people who did shots like this, they had to figure out, you know, what kind of lens flares and light leaks you're going to have in the frame, even though those are completely manufactured. Um, happens again in a shot later on. So I'd be interested in, in figuring out if these shots were anamorphic or not. And it, it looks like they are anamorphic um, just by the quality of the flares. Um, but I'm not positive about that. But that would make sense because this next sequence in the film, you can see by the bokeh that this was shot anamorphic. So I thought that was really interesting. Oh, and then one more lens artifact that was really strong later on in the episode two was focus breathing. So focus breathing is when you rack from something far away to something close up. The things that go in and out of focus shrink or grow in the frame. And it can be kind of distracting. A lot of people don't like it. Check out this shot, just how strong the focus breathing is. So in anamorphic shots, that focus breathing is going to be much more pronounced vertically than it will horizontally just because of the nature of anamorphic lenses. So you can see the whole foreground of the frame here completely compresses, like shrinks and grows as, as they rack focus. So, oh, and, and there's also barrel distortion. So this line here would normally be straight but because of the wide angle lens, you're getting some barrel distortion there and you're seeing that as a curved line. So just super interesting that they decided to go with this much more dirty look, um, a much more, it's not perfect, it's not clean. And, and I think that a part of the justification for that may be that the world that the characters are living in is itself detuned in a sense, right? Like we have the prequel series, everything's kind of in balance, right? There's murmurs and rumors of things happening, but for the most part, the galaxy is in a stable place. And so you have this nice clean image. And then in this weird interim period between episodes three and four, everything's out of whack. And especially our main character, Obi-Wan Kenobi, is kind of wrestling with two different sides of his personality. Um, the side of him that wants to stay hidden, stay quiet, just just, you know, forget the former life that he lived and the side of him that yearns to be a, that hero, that, you know, wise Obi-Wan Kenobi who saves the day. Um, and so I think that, that that was the reason they used these lenses with so much personality. Um, and I, I think that's the reason they switch back and forth between the two times. I haven't really nailed that down. If you'd be interested in seeing a deeper dive into that. Uh, I think that's something that would be fun to look at. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. I thought that was super interesting. Um, the lens choice is a huge part of the cinematographer's process and uh, it, it really impacts the story. It really makes a difference on the look of the film and it should always be made with the story in mind. So I hope this has been helpful. I uh, hope it's made you think about lens choices. Um, if you're interested in more content like this, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay sharp.